it's time to get crunchy with different span modes on polymaths. Span and activate give us three ways to create different patterns of functions from the eight channels of polymaths. Channel index mode could be thought of as sort of a voltage address. Round mode could be thought of as kind of like sequencing and parallel as essentially a clock divider. Let's go through them one by one and we'll dig in a little further than we had time for in the initial introduction video. In channel index mode, just point span at a channel to activate it. Midnight on the span knob is no channel selected. And then we can activate from there in either direction. Right to left, or left to right. But better yet, we can put it under voltage control. We'll start simple. A cycling function from maths. It is essentially a strum of the eight channels. Just as with last week's Polymaths Gates video, the multiwave is not being sequenced. We've just tuned each of its eight voices to a different note to pass through the QXG. We can get more complicated than that once it's released. So, but just as with any voltage addressing, we can create more complex patterns as simply as making the signal that we are using more complex. With maths, we take the sum output, of course, Let's mix in a little random from Wogglebug. Now it's basically that same downward strum, but with a little randomized jitter added. We could also add some clocks to it for some more tempo synced up and down. Let's clock Tempe with that end of cycle gate, and we'll take a multiplied clock and subtract that from the sum. gets too wild or illegible or whatever, remember that anytime we can limit activations to when the activate input goes high. There's really no need to stop there, or anywhere. Let's actually, instead of sending a straight sum, let's jumble up some of these voltages. We'll pass the variable outputs for maths through several channels of jumbler, and then take an output of jumbler to span. jumble them up by rotating the jumble. So far, 
all differentiation between channels is due to spread. But let's take some of these jumbled outs and use them for modulation dissemination as well, for differentiated functions. Also modulate the oscillation's shape while we're at it. But hey, let's take a look at round mode too. We've probably used this mode the most on the channel so far, and that may be because it's just really easy to set up. Patch a clock to activate, and you're already off to the races. Setting span to one gives us a straight sequence through all channels one at a time. We can turn span to the left to make it go in the opposite direction. The number of channels we offset span by is the number that it will step across with each activation. So, every channel, every other channel, every third channel, etc. Now one thing we haven't really talked about is the mathematical consequences of leaping through by these different numbers of channels when the total number of available channels is always going to be 8. That's a little misleading because we can change that up anytime we want by using the reset input. But that was a patch for another time, namely last week. For now, we'll keep it at eight channels and take a look at those mathematical consequences. Setting span to one is the simplest sequence, just hitting all eight channels in sequential order. Setting it to two means it plays every other channel, which means also that it necessarily misses half of them. 3 creates a sequence that jumps around a bit, but is still a sequence of all 8. 4 is the real weirdo. It jumps exactly half the available channels, meaning that it toggles between just two of them and leaves the rest alone. Once we really add the multi-wave into the mix in earnest, this is going to open some interesting cans of worms. Now 5, like 3, is a staggered pattern of all eight. Six is sort of like two, but in reverse, and seven is sort of like one in reverse. Eight jumps full circle all the way back to itself. So my big main observation I've made here over time is that odd settings activate all channels, while even settings activate only a half, a quarter, or an eighth of the total. This, of course, if we are creating a pattern with a constant span setting. But the creativity might start to flow a little more freely once we start modulating span, as is clearly intended based on that CV input. So let's make something with a dynamic span range. We'll start by just patching a clock to activate to get it going. Now, let's pull a slower clock. We'll patch it to span and attenuate 
just so that when this gate goes high, it sets span to four. This means whenever this gate goes high, the round pattern will start alternating between the current channel and the channel that is four steps away. Sort of a quick variation within the sequence. Let's slow down that tempi channel slightly so that it grabs a different pair of channels each time. Now we could have done this any number of ways. For example, we could just patch a sequence to span or random voltage to it. We could even use the channel index out from another module. All new universal synthesizer system modules are fully modulatable by any existing type of control voltage you've got. So don't get constrained. Now, one reason I did it like this with a divided clock instead of a sequence is that this way we could also molt out the four span clock to spread This will let us change several parameters at once whenever the span is set to four. So that pair of toggling channels will then have a different flavor from the main sequence. Okay, and finally, we have parallel mode. In this mode, the activate input drives a clock divider, and the divisions are spread out further in whatever direction we set the span control. Many musical instruments use linear space in similar ways. Looking at those instruments behind me in the corner, the Alpha Centauri and the Roland System 100 keyboard, these are among the many instruments that distribute pitch from left to right or right to left, high to low, etc. On the new universal synthesizer system, we have a number of places where the lateral placement of channels can be used as shorthand for their characteristics. It's most obvious on spread, which tilts modulation depth left or right across channels. But it's also present in span, and we'll be seeing it in more places in the multi-wave as well. So for example, in parallel mode, we always know that the further from midnight we turn the span control, the more sparse will be activations in that direction. Turn it up to the left, and the leftmost channels get higher divisions and activate less frequently. Turn it to the right, and the rightmost channels activate less frequently. Let's take channels 5 through 8 out of the mix by turning their controls down on the QXG. And we'll patch those polymass outputs to some other destinations. Now as we span to the right, the rightmost channels activate less frequently, and we hear them not as generating notes, but as modulating that filter. But let's spread in the opposite direction, making the fall time shorter on the more frequent directly monitored channels. In this way, we're only hearing four channels of multi-wave, but still all eight channels of polymaths.
Well, let's use those QXG channels too, though. I'm going to patch out from the outputs of five through eight on QXG and into the jumbler. and a couple jumbler outputs to Mimeophone. Mimeophone is set fully wet, and we'll take its outputs to the QXG aux in. We'll rotate Jumbler with a sine wave from Multimod. Again, these upper channels are being activated the least frequently with span set to the right. So they are going to occasionally poke through and we'll hear only echoes of them, not the actual events. Again, we are not sequencing pitch here at all. So the individual channels each sound one same pitch every single time. This too is reminiscent of the legacy of the keyboard and other linear acoustic instruments. Press a key and you always get the same pitch. There's something comforting in it. But you probably know as well as I do that the modular synth is not bound by that kind of rule. It breaks notes up into their component and quantum parts and lets us rearrange them. It's helpful and maybe a little comforting to hear how these span modes work in that kind of simple, transparent way. But there is much greater complexity waiting, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and happy patching.